Get ready ladies and gentlemen, here comes my favourite lecture of the entire section. The reason this is my favourite lecture is a few reasons. We're not going to learn too much new, we're mainly going to be revising, but we're going to see a few different things we've learned and combine them to create something new. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to make a mini form validation framework. So let's go ahead and create an input to validate. I'm going to jump up here and create a new input and we're going to give this one a value for now and I'm just going to call this one username or I'm going to put in user. Let's go ahead and close that one off and everything is still working correctly. <laughs> we actually have many users because I'm doing this inside of v4. That was not really my intention. I'm going to go ahead and move this one up here. Let's save it off and now we only have one username input. This is much more what I was expecting. The next thing we're going to do is see how we can accomplish two-way binding. So what I'd like to do is have some kind of value in here. And whenever I update it, I'm also going to update a variable rendered down here, which I'm also going to call value. Save this one off. At the moment, we haven't got a variable called value. We better go ahead and create that one right now. I'm going to create a new val value variable and it's just going to be used by default. Our next goal is going to be using this value down here inside of our input up here. And we've actually already seen how to do this. We're going to do it with vbind. You're able to use vbind on many different attributes, not just class. You can actually use this on any attribute you'd like. So let's go ahead and try and bind to this value here. We're going to use vbind here. We're going to bind to the value. And now this is going to become a JavaScript expression. It's going to evaluate this expression. In this case, it's just going to evaluate to the string user. Let's go ahead and try it out. If we save this off, we can see this is actually not working as we expected. We must have a bug of some sort. Let's try and figure that one out. This one shouldn't be user, this one should be value because that is the name of our variable. Save it off and try again. And everything is now working exactly the same as before, but we've actually made a lot of progress. Instead of hard coding the value here, we've now made a variable and that's going to make it very easy to manipulate. If we go ahead and change this, nothing is going to change down here. So we haven't quite got two-way binding yet. The next thing we're going to have to do is make sure we're updating this variable correctly. I'm going to show you how to do that now. But what I'm going to do first is format this to make it a little bit more readable. You can see I really like to put things on different lines. I think this makes everything much more readable in the long run. If I ever have more than one attribute, I'm going to make a new line. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and see something we've seen before, and that is vOn. We're going to listen for an event, and in this case, it's going to be input. And we're going to call a function, which I'm also going to name input. You can of course call this whatever you like. I really like the convention to match up the variable name or the, the event name and the actual function name. We're not going to pass any arguments, but we're going to see the default argument to any event. The first thing I'm going to do is jump down here and create a new method, and that one is going to be called input. You can pass a method or a value to a method, which we've seen before. If you don't pass something, however, we're going to get the native JavaScript event by default, and this is going to contain a lot of interesting information. I'm just going to show you how this one works. I'm going to go ahead and log the event. What's going to happen now is every time I do an input event, so when I type, it's going to call this function, Let's just jump down here. It's going to call this function and console log the native JavaScript event. Let's go ahead and give it a try. If we check out our console here and go ahead and start typing something, we should see it working. If I type in R, we're going to get an event here and we can see all the usual JavaScript events and all the data that comes with it. We're interested in one specific one, which is going to be target.value. And that's going to be the current value inside of here. Let's go ahead and try and log that one. I'm going to say target.value. Save it off and see what happens. Come in here and just clear the console. And if I start typing, we're going to see the updated text. So everything is working correctly. The final step is going to be taking this value and updating our, var val our variable up here. So let's go ahead and do that. All we need to do is change this one around. Instead of console logging, we're going to say this.value and we're just going to update that to equal event.target.value. This is going to cause this to change and because it's in data, it's going to be reactive. So with a bit of luck, we're also going to update this value here and finish accomplishing two-way binding. Save it off and give it a try. If we go ahead and start typing, that is working correctly. We've accomplished two-way binding, definitely a good place to be. While we're here, we're going to also see another computed property. So let's go ahead and do that. What I would like to do is validate this. If it's less than five characters, we're going to show an error. And if it's not, we're going to render no error at all. And we've actually seen how to do this already. We're going to see two ways to accomplish this. One is using an incorrect way, using another variable. And then we're going to see the correct way with the computed property. We could make another variable called error in here. We're going to make it null by default. And then we're going to update this every time we input a value. So for example, if we scroll down here, 
we're going to do a check on the length of this value. So I'm going to say if and check the length. So we're going to say this dot value. We're going to see if the length is less than five. If it is, we're going to have an error. So I'm going to say this dot error is equal to must be greater than five. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Now that we have this message, we just have to render it. So I'm going to jump up here and render it directly under my input. We're also going to give this a bit of styling. We already have some red styling. So what I can do is wrap this in a div and we're just going to give this a class of red to make it very clear it is an error. Let's go ahead and save it off and see what happens. If we go ahead and start typing, we're actually going to get an error here because it's not the required length. If we make it longer than five, it's not going to go away. So it looks like we have a bug. The bug is we're not going to get rid of the error. So that's what we're going to have to do now. We're just going to add an else block in here and then just say this.error is equal to an empty string. And that's going to evaluate to false. Finally, if we jump up here and start typing, it's going to work correctly. And if it's shorter, it's going to say it must be greater than five. So everything is working correctly. This is a good way to do it, but there is a better way. All we've done here is create an extra variable and this is not necessary. The error state is actually derived data. It's derived from the value so we can use a computed property. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new computed property called error. A computed property, again, just to remind you, is going to be a function with no arguments. It's going to depend on the contents of it to evaluate. Now we're going to go ahead and copy paste this code here. It's going to go ahead and grab this one and paste it up inside of error. Now we're just going to, instead of uh, assigning this variable, we're just going to return. So I'm going to return this variable. Otherwise, I'm going to return nothing. Finally, I'm going to delete this value here. We don't need it anymore. And if everything goes according to plan, this is going to recalculate based on this dot value dot length. Let's try it out. We save it off and refresh the page. We can see it's validating immediately. And that's because we haven't got the correct length. If we start typing, we have the correct length and it's gone. And if we get rid of that, it's going to come back. So everything is working according to plan. What we've managed to do is quite a high value refactor. We've eliminated an extra variable and instead we're using derived data. And this greatly reduces the chance of incurring bugs.